Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Read With Me. I'm yours truly, Isabel Bedell. I'm one of the founders here at Billionaireette. And we are currently reading 12 and a Half. It's Gary Vee's amazing, amazing book. It's all about leveraging your emotional ingredients for your success in business. And in the last video, we went over gratitude and self-awareness. I did give you guys in a an amazing exercise in that last video. And if you do take me on, take me on that dare. Okay. I don't know if I said that correctly in English terms, but anyways, if you, if you're willing to take that dare on, um, I commend you for that because it's a really, really great dare. And I feel like it's not only going to be a dare that will benefit you in the long run, but it'll definitely excite you. So anyways, I love, I love truth or dare. I think it's such a great, great game when done correctly. So anyways, so let's get into the next next uh, video here, we're going to be going over accountability and optimism. These are two ingredients that follow gratitude and self-awareness in the emotional ingredients uh, that Gary Vee is talking about in this book. So make sure to get some water. In this case, I'm drinking water out of a wine glass in tribute to Empathy Wines. If you haven't tried Empathy Wines, make sure to do so. Great, great wine selection. Let me know in the comments if you like Cabernet, or if you're a Savion Blanc, or, you know, what type of wine you're into. Let us know. Merlot, Pinot Noir. Let us know. Anyways, so shall we? Accountability. Accountability is the fact or condition of being accountable. Responsibility. Okay. People love to deflect blame from themselves onto other people. The greatest misconception is that avoiding accountability will lead to happiness, when in reality the reverse is true. And then he goes into three different quotes. It's my boss's fault. I'm not getting paid enough. Sally messed up on my project. That's on Rick for not communicating. The market collapsed the day before our launch. Well, if the client hadn't made these demands, these are all quotes that he's talking about. When you blame others, you're admitting to yourself that you're no longer in control. When you blame others, you're admitting to yourself that you're no longer in control. You give leverage to the person or persons you're pointing your finger at. And you become a victim of the situation you're in. Strong. Instead of pointing a finger... Consider pointing the thumb back at yourself. And he reverses those quotes into these. I need to ask my boss for a raise or get a new job. I have to set a better framework to work with Sally in the future. I need to set up a quick check-in meeting with Rick. If I hadn't been looking for the gold rush, or if I had moved quicker during the gold rush, this wouldn't have happened. If I had been more upfront with the client, I wouldn't be in this situation. I think of accountability as the brakes. It stops the momentum of pain that comes from blaming others. If your business partner screws you and you go into a dark spiral of blame, accountability gets you out of it. If you listen to two people arguing, you'll notice that the entire conversational flow changes the second someone takes a step towards accountability. No matter what challenge I'm facing, I have to accept that in some way, I made a decision that put me in that situation. 
No matter what challenge I'm facing, I have to accept that in some way, I made a decision that put me in that situation. Even if the decision I made was to ignore the situation until this moment, I need to hold myself accountable for that too. It gives me a great calm and comfort to feel that every issue in my life is 100% my fault. It excites me to know that nobody else is in control. If I created the issue, then I have the power to fix it. If I didn't create the issue and it's bigger than me or purely circumstantial, I can still decide how I absorb it. Accountability is one of the most challenging ingredients for most people because their self-esteem is predicted on the outcome of their actions. It's hard to take blame when you're kind of, when you're not kind to yourself or optimistic about the future. Taking it leaves you completely vulnerable to other people's judgment. It's hard. Let me read that again. It's hard to take blame when you're not kind to yourself or optimistic about the future. Taking it, taking blame, leaves you completely vulnerable to other people's judgment. People fear other people's opinions, so they develop an ego defense mechanism against their own mistakes. It's a form of avoidance disguised as a solution. I cheer for people. I I show my admiration for them. However, I don't think others are better than me. I also don't think I'm better than them. When you don't overvalue your opinion, it's easier to not overvalue the opinions of others. When you don't overvalue your opinion, it's easy to not overvalue the opinions of others. It frees you to, the, to be accountable. It's easy to tell the world it's my fault because there's nothing anybody can say about me that can affect my self-esteem. You might be able to trick certain people by deflecting accountability, but you can't trick those with stronger emotional intelligence than you. People who have an, a high EQ are typically the most liked or the most successful. And it really sucks if you can't win with that group. To them, it's obvious when you're bl- passing blame. Unfortunately, many people would rather live their lives tricking other emotionally weak players. They'd rather win with those who are ego-driven and fear-based. I do have empathy for those who would avoid accountability. Because for a long time, I also avoided kind candor and one-on-one confrontation. I went too far in the direction of being empathetic and taking accountability for other weak others' weaknesses or mistakes, which meant that some employees didn't realize they also had room for improvement. My avoidance of kind candor always led me to a situation I didn't want to be in. In the short term, I avoided conflict, but throughout my 20 plus years in VaynerMedia and Wine Library, some employees left because I didn't give them proper feedback on how they could actually grow. I'm continuing to learn that leaders need to mix kind candor with accountability. Too much accountability can give give way to entitlement and resentment down the road for both managers and employees. Perhaps kind candor can make it easier for you to embrace accountability. It means you don't have to passively accept all blame. If you're having friction with a business partner, you can take accountability for putting yourself in that position, but still give feedback to the other person when necessary. You can do both. Of course, in business, financial stability is the big variable that can make it easier to be accountable. That's why saving money is crucial. As you work on developing this ingredient, ingredient, I encourage you to ask yourself this important question. Can you quit your job tomorrow? A lot of people can't. 
It's one thing if you're 22 years old and fresh out of school with no debt. But when you're starting to add other responsibilities, it's not just about you anymore. It's even if you feel that you can live in a smaller house without fancy things, maybe you have kids who each need their own room to study. You might have a significant other who wants a different lifestyle. Do you feel trapped? If so, a good start towards taking accountability is to look at your expenses and seeing where you can save money. Can you move an hour away from your office to save on rent? Now that more companies accept remote work, can you sell some things you don't use anymore? As I get older, I realize how much of my happiness comes from being in control. Financial control is one of is only one aspect of being in control. It's also about being in control of how I use these 12 and a half ingredients. When you genuinely feel that you're in control, you don't fear the outcome. If you have savings, you can feel safe because you can take care of yourself. If you're still working towards that security, you can still feel safe in the fact that you can always get another job. There are always more opportunities. The world is abundant and you're in the driver's seat. Let me read that again for everyone. There are always more opportunities. The world is abundant and you are in the driver's seat. Much of the day-to-day angst people face comes from a feeling of helplessness. Accountability can potentially reverse all of that. I wish this book were called 13, but it's not. It's called 12 and a half because I'm still in the process of addressing my own kind candor as a typical ingredient. I'm still in the process of addressing my kind candor ingredient. If you know that accountability is one of your halves, I hope you'll begin to do the same right now. Powerful, powerful, powerful. That is the conclusion. That is accountability. That is accountability. I really like that one. Uh, My favorite part of this was it's hard to blame. It's hard to take blame when you're not kind to yourself or optimistic about the future. Taking it leaves you completely vulnerable to other people's judgment. It's when you don't overvalue your own opinion. It's easier to not overvalue the opinions of others. But this one right here, this one right here, when you blame others, you're admitting to yourself that you're no longer in control. You give leverage to the people you're pointing your finger at, and you become a victim of the situation that you're in. You're no longer in control when you are blaming others and not taking accountability for yourself. So strong. Put it in the comments. If you if you know that you can um, get better at taking responsibility, I know I can. I every single day I have the option to take responsibility for my own actions. And honestly, when I do take responsibility for them, it makes everything a lot better. I feel stronger, I feel more in control. I feel more in alignment. I feel like I can hold myself together, you know? Find ways to hold yourself accountable, you know, especially with finances. It's he, he slightly touched into it and I got really excited about, you know, going into the financial part because that's definitely my thing. But, um, It's so true. Like once you really hold yourself accountable when it comes to your finances and you're not dependent on your job or whatever it is that you're doing um, to make sure that you're safe and you're you're making sure that your significant other, maybe your children or your family are taken care of, then the game gets better, you know? All right, let's get into optimism. So 
I think it's a great, great segue into this going from accountability to now um, optimism. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, optimism. Optimism. Hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something. Optimism. On December 13th, 2020, I posted on Instagram on Instagram, a video of a deer skipping across a beach. I gave it this title. All I want is for you to be as happy as this baby deer. That is all. Someone left a comment on that post saying, till that lion comes. I responded, and then he will get smart and avoid the lion. Too many are scared of the thought of the lion without realizing you're capable of navigating it. F the lion. Optimism is a word that has become controversial in some, in some ways. There's a misconception that it means the same thing as delusion. A stunning percentage of people, probably including the user who left that comment, believe that optimism is just a setup for disappointment and loss. Those who are scared and hurt are afraid of optimism because they don't want to be let down, so they confuse it with naivete. I agree. Those who are scared and hurt are afraid of optimism because they don't want to be let down, so they confuse it with naivete. Take a second and reread the definition at the beginning of this section. Hopefulness and confidence about the future were the successful outcome of something. In contrast, here's the definition of delusion. A false belief or judgment about external reality held despite incontroversial incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, recurring especially in mental conditions. Notice how they're different. Yes, indeed. The opposite of optimism would be pessimism. Here's a definition of that. Pessimism is a tendency to see the worst aspects of things or believe that the worst will happen, a lack of hope or confidence in the future. Well, does it make sense that with hope and confidence about the future, you have a brighter, you have a higher chance of reaching your desired outcome? I think so. More important, you have far more control of your perspective than you have over the trillions of variables that make navigating the universe so tricky. Choosing optimism over pessimism is, at the end of the day, wildly practical. It does mean being naive or blind to the downsides in business or in life. In fact, I'm more aware than most about what could go wrong. I just believe that I'm capable of navigating any challenge. So, for example, if you think you'll be genuinely happy running your own business, I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's going to be easy. However, I'm excited that you even have the opportunity to try. Your grandfather couldn't even start a company on the side with his smartphone. So gratitude can fuel optimism. Gratitude can fuel optimism. Do you know how lucky you are? Do you know how lucky you are? Optimism is being thrilled about your next at bat while acknowledged while acknowledging that you're not guaranteed to hit a home run. Optimism is being thrilled at your next at bat while acknowledging that you're not guaranteed a hit to hit a home run. So it's like going to the base so pumped to hit this ball. But you know that it's not a guaranteed home run. That's optimism. Like that. If this is hard for you, 
ask yourself, what's your defense mechanism when something doesn't go as planned? Do you default to blaming others and getting upset? Do you lack accountability? Do you use ego as a shield? Do you crawl into a shell because you're dwelling on the past and beating yourself up? Is your self-esteem entirely influenced by what other people think of you? Or do you take accountability? Do you deploy gratitude to limit dwelling? Do you have perspective on life as a whole? Outside of your business or career, are you kind to yourself? The other emotional ingredients will help you deal with losses more effectively, so you won't be let down as often. When you know you won't be let down, optimism comes naturally. Rewiring your emotions takes time. Start by surrounding yourself with optimistic people and limit interactions with people who drag you down mentally. Mm -hmm. Fill your ears with positivity through podcasts and videos 24-7, 365. That's, that's, honey, that is the ingredient right there. Rewiring your emotions takes time. Start by surrounding yourself with optimistic people, limit interactions with people who drag you down mentally, and fill your ears with positivity through podcasts and videos, 24-7, 365. Groups who have been historically oppressed tend to draw optimism from other successful people who look like them. That's one of the reasons why representation is so important. My grandparents would always point to the TV if there was a person on it with a Jewish last name. They'd say, wow, a Jewish person is on TV. They lived under oppression in the Soviet Union. I didn't understand them then, but now I see why they were thrilled to see a successful person who looked like them. They were a source of hope. Of <laughs> They were a source of hope. That's awesome. I think optimism as a map. It helps me see my destination. It's one of the reasons why I value the journey over the outcome. Optimism makes the journey so much more fun than pessimism. It's exciting to wake up in the morning and play my game when I have hope and confidence in achieving my goals. Optimism makes playing the game more enjoyable than winning it. I talk about how I want to buy the New York Jets one day, but I wish you could understand how little I actually care about it. Of course, it, could, it would be amazing if it happened, but I'm comfortable if it doesn't happen. What I'm not comfortable with is not trying. That's why I believe optimism is a perfect teammate to tenacity. How can you be tenacious if you don't think you can achieve what you're setting out to achieve? How can you put in the necessary work? More important, how can you sustain success once you achieve it? If I'm climbing a hill and I tell myself I'm not going to be able to make it to the top, it's not as much fun to push through, but if I believe I can, I'll, I'll genuinely enjoy the process of climbing, even if naysayers say I can't. I do acknowledge that, much like Darth Vader, you can use pessimism with tenacity to achieve your goals, but it's definitely not sustainable. If you have confidence in a positive outcome and you pair your optimism with tenacity, success has a better chance to come true and be sustainable. Indeed. If you have confidence in a positive, positive outcome, if you have confidence in a positive outcome and you pair your optimism with tenacity, success has a better chance to come true and be sustainable. That's true. That is true. I agree 100, 100%. I agree 100%. Of course, 
So these two, these two amazing, amazing ingredients, accountability and optimism, conclude this read with me session. And I want you to choose one. Okay. And I wanted to actually share with you that every single one of these read with me sessions. <coughs> oh, wow. <coughs> wow. Excuse me. So I want you to choose one, whether it's accountability or optimism. Which one are you going to practice this week? Which one do you really want to focus on? Which one do you really want to develop? I know that all of these ingredients are important, but maybe you're really, really optimistic. You know, maybe you got that down. Maybe you're like perfectly great at being optimistic and you just can't hold yourself accountable. Maybe that's a challenge for you, finding accountability in your actions and, you know, finding accountability when a confrontation happens or taking full accountability of maybe your financial situation right now. So choose one that you want to grow with, choose one that you want to develop. And I'm so excited for the next video that we're going to be talking about empathy and kindness. Because I honestly feel like he organized these ingredients perfectly in a specific order so you can stack on top of each one and get to the point where we're going to get to in part two of this book and get into all the different scenarios. So super, super excited. Make sure to choose one and we'll see you in the next video where we tackle both empathy and kindness. Talk to you soon.